What are demons and can demons possess Christians? That's coming up here on Pursuing the Savior. What is going on? My name is Archie and welcome to Pursuing the Savior. I'm a pastor and a writer and I have a passion for helping people understand the Bible and find their way back to God. That's what this channel is all about. Last week, we talked about the angels and whether or not we have individual guardian angels. In this week's episode, we talked about what the demons what they can do, what their ultimate destination will be, and whether or not they can possess Christians. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hit that little notification bell so you won't miss a thing. And if you're watching on Facebook, don't forget to like or follow our official Facebook page, Pursuing the Savior. Let's get started. Demons are a very interesting biblical topic. However, marami mga Kristiyano ang walang proper knowledge tungkol sa kanila, ano yung kaya nilang gawin, ano yung kanilang ultimate destination, at kung kaya ba nilang ipossess ang mga Kristiyano. For the most part, ang kinukuha na natin ng sources tungkol sa mga demons, hindi naman ang Biblia, kundi yung mga sources outside of the Bible. For example, mga pelikula, mga aklat, o di naman kaya mga TV series. Kaya tignan natin kung anong sinasabi ng Biblia tungkol sa mga ito. What are demons? The word demon comes from the Greek word daimonion which means evil spirits. The Hebrew and the Greek word indicate that demons are powerful entities and yet they do not have physical bodies. Mga spirits lang sila. They oppose God's purposes using different tactics or schemes and their purpose is to keep people from believing in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and number two, to disable Christians like you and me from being effective and reaching out to the lost kasi ayaw nila na may maligtas na mga tao. But now let's talk about seven essential things na sa tingin ko ay importanteng malaman natin pila mga Kristiyano. Number one, demons are fallen angels. Scripture tells us that demons were originally angels created by God and they were part of the heavenly armies. However, there was a time when Lucifer rebelled against God at sumama sa kanya ang ilan sa mga populasyon ng mga anghel sa langit. They lost that battle, so God banished them from heaven and sent them to earth. And in the process, ay naging demonyo sila. Revelation tells us that Satan was a star who was cast out from heaven and a third of the stars in heaven followed in his rebellion. Now, these stars couldn't have been actual stars. Instead, this is a metaphor referring to fallen angels, a.k.a. demons. I want to be clear that there is no explicit passage in the Bible na nagkukwento kung papan nag-originate ang mga demonyo. And the closest thing we have is none other than the accounts found in the book of Revelation. Number two. Demons are led by Satan. Si Satan ay napakaraming mga pangalan na ibinibigay sa kanya sa scripture. Kasama na doon yung pangalang Beelzebul. Tinatawag siyang Prince of Demons and sometimes tinatawag din siyang Ruler of the Kingdom of Darkness at ang mga demonyo ay sumusunod sa kanya. Ang ginagawa ni Satan ay sirain anuman ang ginagawa ng Panginoon gamit ang panlilin lang or deception. Ilan sa mga ginagawa niya ay yung pagkakalat ng mga false doctrine at yung persecution sa mga Kristiyano. When Jesus returns, the Bible tells us that Satan will be imprisoned in the bottomless pit for 1,000 years and after that period, siya ay pakakawalan and again, he will deceive nations and he will gather them to rebel against God. Ito ang magiging final rebellion ni Satanas ng mga demonyo at ng mga taong galit sa Diyos. Number three, demons can inhabit people. Yung mas sikat na terminology dito ay yung demonic possession. However, if we use the word possession, it would indicate that demons are taking ownership of something or someone. Well, in fact, they do not own anything. They are illegal settlers. Several passages in the Bible tells us or describe to us kung paano kumilos ang mga demonyo. They can cause people to have physical symptoms katulad ng inability to speak, blindness, o di naman kaya minsan epilepsies. Also, demons can cause people to do evil things katulad ng cases na nangyari kina Judas and King Saul. However, 
Demons can not only influence people physically and psychologically. In fact, they can also affect people spiritually. For example, pwede niyang punuin ng galit ang puso ng isang tao para yung taong yon ay hindi magpatawad and minsan naman ginagamit niya na binubulog niya yung tao para yung taong yon maniwala sa mga false doctrines. Number four, demons have limitations. There is no doubt that demons are way more powerful than human beings. However, hindi sila katulad ng Diyos. Unang-una, hindi sila omnipresent. They cannot be in two places at the same time. In the Bible, makikita natin ang Panginoong Jesus na nagkaroon ng encounter sa isang legion of demons at inutusan niya yung legion ng demons na yon na umalis dun sa katawan ng tao at hinayaan niyang pumasok sila doon sa katawan nung humigit kumulang dalawang libong mga baboy. Pangalawa, though demons are intelligent, but they are no match for the wisdom of our God. Ibig sabihin, they are not omniscient. Just like humans and angels, they too are created beings. Therefore, they have limited knowledge. May mga bagay na hindi nila alam. For example, they cannot read our minds at hindi rin naman nila alam kung ano ang mangyayari sa hinaharap. Perhaps more importantly, they are not omnipotent. They are not all-powerful. As they go about their missions, unwittingly, they are actually serving God. Satan may rule them, but they ultimately submit to the Lord Jesus Christ. And in fact, the Bible tells us that demons even obeyed the Lord's disciples. Number five, demons are defeated enemies. Demons may be powerful and immortal, but they are not overcomers. When Jesus died on the cross, the Bible tells us that He disarmed Satan and His army of demons. Yung sacrificial death ng Panginoong Jesus doon sa krus ng Kalbaryo, for a moment ay nagbuka siyang defeat. Parang natalo siya. But in reality, it was the ultimate victory of the Lord Jesus against Satan and His demons. Dahil nangyari dito, lahat ng effort ni Satan at ang mga demonyo para sirain ang ginagawa ng Panginoon ay nauwi sa wala. Dahil ultimately, nagwagi ang Panginoon at ang lahat ng sumusunod sa kanya ay tinatawag na mananagumpay. Number six, demons will eternally suffer in hell. Alam mo kapatid, si Satan at ang kanyang mga demonyo bilang na ang mga araw nila. And their destiny is certain. They will be Doomed. Revelation tells us that Satan, along with the false prophet, the beast of the sea, and all of his followers will all be sent into the lake of fire where they will spend their eternity in suffering, in pain, and agony, and torment they will have to pay for their crimes. In that place, they can no longer deceive nor harm anyone. Number seven, demons cannot separate Christians. From the love of God. Basahin natin ang Romans chapter 8 verses 38 hanggang 39. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Despite their collective power, Satan and his demons cannot do anything to snatch a believer away from God's hands. Jesus' finished work on the cross of Calvary did not only disarm Satan and his demons, but he also paved the way for people to be reconciled with God through faith in Him. At ang isang totoong believer, isang totoong Kristiyano, ay merong assurance of salvation. And there is nothing in all of creation, not even angels nor demons, can separate a Christian from the love of God. Now, balikan natin yung original natin question kanina. Can demons possess Christians? Given the definition of the word possess, meaning to have absolute control and authority over something or someone, the answer is pretty obvious. No, demons cannot possess Christians. Neither can they inhabit Christians. You know why? Because the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit indwells the bodies of believers. And it's quite hard to believe na ang Holy Spirit ay nananahan sa ating katawan and at the same time, tayo din ay pinananahanan ng demonyo. Not gonna happen. However, 
Satan and his demons can persecute Christians. Katulad nung kaso ni Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and Job in Job chapters 1 and 2. In other words, Christians cannot be demon-possessed, but they can be demon-oppressed. And that ends our mini-series on angels and demons, and I hope meron po kayong natutunan dito po sa ating dalawang videos na ito. And if you want more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our official Facebook page. And with that, my friend, I'll see you on the next one.